Well, it's two in the morning, and I finally got this beast put together. <clears throat> Poorly cable maintenance, or cable managed, I should say. But that took most of the time, getting all the cables bundled together and out of the way for the airflow. They're all up high here, so they look bad, but when you look at the airflow, it's fairly well unimpeded. And this is horrible camera work. A little bit of a nest right here, but I can pull that off to the side, no problem. This wire will be gone as soon as I can get myself an extension cable because <laughs> it's kind of just holding the fan cables because uh, it's Molex. So what I'm going to end up doing is swapping these out with two Noctua fans and then running dedicated cables up to this bar and down to the bus at the bottom so that I can PWM them. These are non-PWM fans which are actually surprisingly quiet. They, uh, they're the ones that come with this Roswell, what is it, 40, 4412 I think it is. Anyhow, let me give you a quick tour. Power supply, just in case you've never seen a power supply before. Uh, the cooler is the Noctua NHD7L I believe or something to that effect. Or D D9L? Yeah, D7L, I think. Um, and it's a 3U compatible, it's in a 4U case, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, 3U compatible um, heat sink, heat tower, whatever. Um, the cheapest USB 3 thumb drive I could find, an A Data 32 gig um, USB 3 that's going to hold the operating system for this free NAS build. The Super Micro uh, X10 Sierra Lima 7 stroke Foxtrot, um, which is in a bit of an older board, but uh, I wanted something that wasn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, in the back here, we've got 32 gigs of Kingston ECC compatible RAM, and obviously, because under here is a Xeon, it's ECC compatible. I put the uh, SSD. It's going to be used for either read or write cache. I honestly have not settled. I've been having such an argument with myself that I pretty much have no choice but to buy a second one just so that I can add um, read and or write caching. So uh, this hole here will hold the next one. And I'll put another one right next to it. It's just set up like that for, for the time being. And as you can see, I've even got one last SATA port for it. SATA 6 gig. So. I can even probably swap that out for some better uh, SSDs. However, at this point, the two onboard gig NICs are going to be the bottleneck, which is just amazing to say. Pop down the hood here. Pop down the hood and look inside. Focus. My inner AVE is coming out. If you follow his channel, you know what I'm about to say. There it goes. So these are hot swap bays. Allows me to put 12 drives in. So the way I've got this connected is there's an LSI SATA controller, or sorry, SAS controller down here. So there's eight ports on that SAS controller. And then there are four ports on the SATA controller. So these four are on three gig ports, and these eight are on six gig SAS ports. Um, these back planes can do either SATA or SAS, and everything here is just SATA because it's all I really need. Um, made sure to get myself a 850 power supply, or sorry, a Corsair power supply, and this one's got the uh, 80, 80 gold rating, so nice and efficient. Um, Everything on here is very quiet. I've just booted it up so far once just to check to see if the image on the uh, focus, the image on the flash drive works. And it came up with the FreeNAS install, so, so that's good. All right, so my next task, populate them drives. Over here on the workbench, so far I've got three of the six four terabyte Western Digital drives. In these boxes are four more. I've just been busy taking, taking careful notes 
to get all my serial numbers and everything ironed out first. Anyway, we'll get back to it here shortly.